Hello there and welcome to this video. My name is Riley and today we're going to be having a look at the coin Amise Go. This cryptocurrency is aiming to unbank the banked. So, in this video, we're going to look at what it is. We're going to look at what are the features of Amise Go and its coin. We're going to look at why is it useful, the team and the community behind it, the, where you buy and store it, the roadmap and my thoughts on the future, and a little bit of technical analysis at the end. And if you haven't watched my videos before, I'll put each of these headings in the description box with timestamps next to them. So if you only want to see a specific part of the video, you can just click on that timestamp below and it'll take you to that uh, necessary time frame. So without further ado, let's get into it, shall we? Okay, so to start off with, we're going to talk about what is it. Well, it has a few layers to it, Amise Go. And the first one is Amise, which is a company. And Amise is a multinational company which was founded in 2013 by, I'm sorry, I probably will pronounce this wrong, I think it's Jun Hazagawa. Um, and they currently have offices in mainly Thailand, but also Japan, Singapore, and Indonesia. And their main purpose of the company is to bring payment solutions and services to businesses and institutions all across Asia. So mainly focusing on that Asian region. And the second layer to this is Amise, which is a payment solutions platform. And this allows merchants like who are customers who will be customers of Amise when they use the if they use the platform, I should say. It will allow them to accept payments for their goods and services through a number of online payment methods without worrying about high fees, um, long transaction times, and compatibility and regional barriers. Now, merchants can receive payments through methods such as Alipay, um, online banking transfers, and a bunch of other methods. And regarding Alipay, the uh, payment pl platform I just mentioned, uh, the Amese platform currently allows merchants to accept payments through Alipay, um, and this is really good because Alipay is a very popular Chinese payment method. And the third layer to this cryptocurrency is the Amise Go OMG ERC20 token. And currently we have about 102 million um, coins in circulation, which will likely decrease um, when staking goes live. And they have a total of 140 million or around 140 million OMG, which is a nice low number, especially for a utility, um, a utility token, even though it's sort of a utility and then sort of a currency. The value from OMG comes from taking tokens in order to validate activity, so transactions that is, on the OMG chain and we'll talk about the staking in a second. Which le This actually leads me on to my next point which is um, some of the features on it. And that the first one I want to talk about is proof of stake. And OMG uses a proof of stake model which allows it, uh, people to verify blocks on the network and gain rewards by staking their tokens. So people stake their OMG tokens in order to verify blocks. Unlike on Bitcoin where you use hash power in order to validate blocks, you use your tokens to make sure that you have a stake in the network in order to verify. And um, you might be asking, well, if someone puts their tokens in, what's to stop them from doing any malicious activity? Well, if they do try to harm the network in any way, what will happen is their tokens will, all their tokens will be burnt and they will lose access to them forever. Additionally, Ethereum can be locked into the OMG network, which means um, you can trade assets over Ether as well as over the OMG platform, and this is through the use of smart contracts. Ethereum smart contracts, that is. Transactions can also be moved to sidechains uh, through the use of Plasma in order to reduce the impact on the network. And so Plasma is a second layer scaling solution which is introduced by Joseph Poon and they are hoping to implement it on Ethereum. And what it does, it uses something they call child chains in order to increase, increase scalability across the network. So they're making little like baby blockchains, little separate blockchains that can spread out the, um, the network's network load, I should say, in order to increase efficiency and reduce bottlenecks. And there also have been rumors of OMG utilizing the Lightning Network due to the nature of the project and due to Joseph Poon being the, an advisor because he also wrote the um, white paper for the Lightning Network as well. But that's only rumors. They haven't confirmed anything just yet. 
some other features of OMG. Um, so we've got a multi-layered infrastructure and the first layer I want to talk about is a MISE, which is the platform I mentioned before. And this will act as the acceptance layer for a glo as a global integration platform. And this will include and be able to uh, be compatible with most, if not all, cryptocurrencies, debit, credit cards, as well as other things such as reward points and in-game items. So a ton of different assets. And the second layer is a decentralized exchange. And this is like sort of the main thing of the OMG uh, platform. And this will allow for any form of digital asset to be traded over the OMG blockchain whilst being black, black, backed by Plasma, that is. They will also have a very flexible SDK and API with um, really good features as well. And the third layer is a decentralized cash in, cash out. So to explain, I'll use an example. For example, if you were using um, an ATM or over-the-counter um, or the OMG layer, people can convert cash to any other asset they want on the MSA Go platform as well as conversely. So you can put in cash, put it into the MSA Go platform and convert it to whatever you want and then vice versa with the assets that you already have in there. And so although it is three layers, all the layers work together in order to execute the processes in the one place. So it creates an efficient process. Now, why is it useful? Well, for quite a few reasons, actually. Uh, the first one is many people in the Eastern world do not utilize banks um, and they do not trust the banks. And this is very important uh, because it creates such a big audience for them to target. And also the payment platforms in Asia are very independent. So um, for those people who even are with the bank, it's like, yeah, it's not that, yeah, it, as I said, it's very independent. And if the companies choose, OMG will be compatible with current e-wallets, things like Google Pay and Apple Pay and things like that. And also, it does not matter what you're converting to or from, the fees will always remain the same. So there's a standard low fee, which is really good. And one of the direction, um, you have one direct conversion and that's it. Also, help, it helps greatly with mass adoption due to the fact that it breaks the difficulty barrier. So this is one of the big things with the cryptocurrency and mass adoption. One of the big problems with it we currently face at the moment, crypto and all that, although it's becoming less of a nerdy thing, it's still kind of a nerdy thing. We're not, we need to be, for true mass adoption, we need to be at the point where, say, someone's grandma can just walk down the street and use different cryptocurrencies and things like that, which we're nowhere near yet. But OMG is aiming to be able to help this process and try and implement this process, particularly in the Asian region. And they've got quite a few potential use cases. The first one is remittances, uh, loyalty points, mobile banking, asset tracking, digital gift cards, and tokenized fiat. So heaps of good use cases there, which will be able to um, impact a lot of people's lives. Also, this is sort of a bit more on partnerships. So Amitago are currently partnered with McDonald's Thailand, uh, which is obviously a big company. Everyone knows McDonald's. And they also have some really good key investors that include SBI Investment Bank, um, SMBC. I can't even remember who that is, to be honest. Um, Ascend Capital, SMDV, Golden Gate Ventures, and then East Ventures as well. Omise will also has also had meetings and discussions with larger companies such as Google and have even met with the Bank of Thailand. The team and the community behind Omise Go, for first off the team, they have a very, very good strong team and they have a lot of experience in their team with big companies. For example, one of the people in their team has worked for Visas and had a work for Visa, I should say, and had a managing role there at Visa. And they also have very, very solid advisors too, which includes the likes of Vitalik Buterin, uh, who was the Ethereum co-founder, and Joseph Poon, who I mentioned before. He actually wrote the OMG white paper and the author of Plasma and also Lightning Networks. So very smart guy. Um, and the community behind it, they've got quite a good community. Um, 127k Twitter followers and... The, as I mentioned before, June, I think it's June, um, the co-founder of Ethereum, I mean Ethereum, Amise Go, 
Um, he has a Twitter account with 22,000 uh, followers, and they also have a Facebook page with 11,000 followers on it as well. So where do you buy and store a Mesa Go? Well, you've got quite a few options with a Mesa Go. Um, I've mentioned here we've got Bittrex, Poloniex, Bitfinex, Binance, Huobi, I think it's pronounced, and then there's a bunch of other exchanges, like including Korean exchanges, which gives it a lot of liquidity, especially coming from the Korean markets at the moment as they're so crazed with cryptocurrencies. But like I've mentioned in previous videos, these four, I guess, are sort of the main exchanges used by people in the Western world. So if you uh, have one of these well, if you're into cryptocurrencies, I should say, you probably should have one of these and you therefore should be able to buy a Mise Go. In terms of uh, storing, you've got a couple of options as well. The first one is the Exodus desktop wallet. Uh, very good desktop wallet. Can't um, talk about it highly enough. Also, you can use my Ether wallet. Um, and with through, you can use a Legend Nano S or a Trezor indirectly through the my Ether wallet. So it's basically, yeah. You have to log on to the website and once you plug in your device you will be have a, you will select the option for your hardware device and then you will be able to send it through myetherwallet.com. So that gives you good um, good uh, variability in terms of storage. So if, if you want quick access on a desktop or long term secure storage on a hard wallet. Now the roadmap of Amise Go and they have quite a nice sort of succinct roadmap here and it's put into different stages um, with the goal this goal of Tengen like a massively scalable cross-chain compatible blockchain with plasma proof of stake consensus um, public permissionless blockchain and all that sort of stuff but looking into the more short term in quarter four of this year they're looking to release the uh, wallet SDK prototype uh, for testing and development then quarter one of next year, 2018, they want to release the SDK publicly, which will, a big thing, will be a big thing because it'll actually mean that they'll have a product because that's sort of the thing holding them back at the moment. They have a really good idea, really good team and all this sort of stuff, but they don't have a working product out there that people can develop on and use. And this SDK will allow people to do that. The next stage will be in quarter two of 2018, which will be the proof of stake blockchain release and staking will become possible. And then beyond quarter two, they'll have the cash in cash out interface like I talked before, and then the plasma um, development into in the introduction into the blockchain. So yeah, that's quite a, they look like they're gonna have quite a busy year next year from this roadmap, as you can see, they've got a lot of big things coming up, like especially the SDK, the proof of stake, the um, the cash in cash out and plasma are all four really big things to bring to your cryptocurrency. Now a little bit of technical analysis to cap things off. So first we'll have a look at the USD price, and we can see here if I just zoom out. Okay, so go as you can see, it's not that old of a uh, cryptocurrency. It just launched in, what is that, July. And after it launched, there was a lot of hype around it because of the, I guess, the nature of the cryptocurrency and the things that it's trying to achieve. So we had this huge run up to about $13, $14. And then after it, like any other coin, which is hyped after its release, it cooled off down to this $5, $5.5 range. And we sort of been floating around this five to ten dollar range ever since for the last couple of months we had things like segwit and all that sort of stuff we were just waiting to hear we haven't had much news for it but recently we've seen the altcoins just booming uh, which is good to see because everyone was kind of in the dumps about it because their coins are losing so much btc value relative and we can see here we've got quite nice stable increasing volume coming out of a miso go and this is really good because with um, stable increasing volume comes uh, supported price action and supported uh, positive price action that is. And we can see that, we can see it reflected in the price. We've had a huge breakout and just gone vertical in terms of the USD price. Um, and in terms of the short term, I think we might have a little bit of a cool off. We can see the RSI is a bit overextended here and the MACD is also quite overextended. So short term I would be thinking that it will pull back a bit um, 
but we're just going to have to wait and see on what happens fundamentally and also with the whole altcoin market over the next couple of months because the next couple of months, um, mainly the first few months of the year, are really big months for trading and are often where you see the biggest price action. Now, in terms of BTC, we can see a bit, if this will load for me, there we go, we can see a bit of a different uh, pattern. So this was sort of like the start, basically the same. We saw the run up and then the pullback. And we've sort of just, because the price has been hovering while Bitcoin's been going up, it's in the Bitcoin relative, it's been going back. And we can see here, we hovered around this uh, previous resistance line to be, make a new support. And then we've broken down from this support line. And as we can see here, like everyone always says, with uh, what was previous resistance now becomes previous support. And we can see that demonstrated here by with this new support line going off this, new, this old resistance line. We shortly hovered around this and now we're, we're going up in this nice channel up here with good increasing volume like I said before but the RSI is a bit overextended and the MACD is a bit overextended so short term I'm not looking to buy any. Um, I've got quite a good portfolio of or I, I think I've got quite a good position of OMG currently but what I've done is I've dollar cost averaged it like I do with all my long term altcoins. Um, which leads me to my next point. I do give Amisa Go a long-term hold, especially over the next year because it's got so much coming out. But what I do with all my altcoins, I don't think it's a good idea just to dump a heap of money into one coin, especially if it's a long-term coin. I just dollar cost average by little bits every now and then when it dips, and that way I can get a nice even price. And I, I've evened it out to the point where it was sort of somewhere down here, which is very good. And now we can see we started up this little run up here. We've gone up basically about 100% in a week, which is quite a lot, which means we probably should pull back a little short term, just catch up to this 50 day moving average. But then I think over the next couple of months, we've really got a lot of room to move for OMG because it has been sort of held back by the Bitcoin price over the last couple of months. But like I said, I'd probably wait short, if you want to buy some short term, wait for a little bit of a pullback. Um, and if, if you don't want to wait, just dollar cost average it by a little bit by a little bit and see where it goes. But I think I think Amisago in terms of both Bitcoin and USD has got some really exciting price action coming over the next year. So that'll do it for this cryptocurrency review. I want to thank you so much for watching. If you like this video or found it helpful, please leave a like and a comment below and make sure to hit that subscribe button as I'll be bringing out future videos on other cryptocurrencies very soon. I'll catch you later.